Hi everybody, Robin Nichols here with another video tutorial for you today. We're going to be looking at Adobe Photoshop Elements version 11 and we're going to look at the hue and saturation tools specifically. This is one of those big, useful, very funky tools that you're probably going to use every time you start editing pictures because we use it to enhance certain colors in the image or we can actually reduce certain colors in the image or we can make the image go black and white. So there are a number of things that we can do with this. Okay. Now that I've got your interest, let's find out where it is. Uh, generally, a lot of the cool stuff is under the Enhance menu here. And you can see, because it's to do with color, of course, it's under the Adjust Color menu here. And there it is, second from the top, Control U. I almost always use Control U, I almost never use menus. But, you know, some of us like menus, some of us don't. If you're on a Mac, of course, it's Command U. So how does this work? I think this has been badly designed because the, the slider we use the most, of course, is saturation. We want to make the colors more intense or less intense. So logic tells me that should be at the top because the other slider, which is a little bit scary, changes the color values. So for example, the red, I can't remember what I call these. These are actually paint pigments. So I suppose the sack or the bag that the, red, the, the pigments are in, which is red, can be changed to any hue you like but as you can see it's a global change so everything in the picture changes all right so pretty much everything that you see in this tool of course is global when I make a, a movement to the left or the right everything shifts in terms of value all right saturation is fantastic because I can make the picture go minus 100 which is essentially black and white fantastic and then I can do something really fancy by enhancing the color again but this time I could use color variations and you can see, hey, that's pretty cool. What I can do is add some red into the shadows. How can I do that? It's a black and white picture. Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Go to the highlights and add some yellow into the highlights. So I can make a sort of sepia tone or even a tinted picture. There we go. Simply by reducing all the color values. So I'm not actually turning it into a grayscale image, which is quite different. I'm just saying, look, it's still a color picture, but I'm turning all the values of color off. Let's just go back a stage. So if I were to choose image mode grayscale, what I essentially do is exactly what it's saying here, discard color information, question mark. And what it means is I'm going to get rid of the RGB channels and just leave myself with a single grayscale channel. So if I click OK, which I can do, it goes black and white, sure. But having done that, because it's just a single grayscale scale channel, if I now choose adjust color variations, you can see here, all I can do is make it lighter or darker. I can't add color back to it. So it's very important to understand that. So we work with these things called RGB images. So you can always see under mode, there is RGB color. Grayscale is just one channel. RGB is red, green, and blue, three channels. Back to Mr. Saturation. So we can see the hue shifts everything globally. There's a little bit of a tip. If you double click the word hue, it resets to zero. And it brings up a little dialog box allowing me to put in sort of say, or whatever you know so I can put in a number if uh, if need be you know a lot of printers will use this because they know exactly how to set up their color parameters by putting in numbers rather than risking it and looking at the visual evidence in the window as I said saturation is fantastic for going that way it's pretty good for going that way in general we go minus more than plus and when we go plus we only go about 20 or so because otherwise if we go too hot you'll find that, for example, on an inkjet printer or an offset litho press, you can't actually get those colors. You know, these are too violent, they're too electric, they're too bright. You may get close to them by paying somebody extra money and adding an extra color into the print process, but of course that gets expensive. The last thing, again, is a slider that I don't think I've ever used in my life, and this is lightness. It just makes the picture darker or lighter. And you can see it's very wishy-washy. This is very similar to levels output levels and you can see here it makes it lighter or it makes it darker so it's very similar and if it's probably exactly the same we do it essentially to make the contrast different so I can lower the contrast a little bit you know so if you've got a picture that's a bit glary you might be able to save it or improve it a little bit by lowering the lightness values okay Another little button down is colorize. This is kind of a bit cheeky. It's down there. What does that do? Ooh, okay. Instant sepia, people say. Well, it's not. It's actually red toned. But what it does is turn it into monochrome, and then it adds a single color, such as red or yellow or green 
or bluey green. As you can see, this is a very good use for the hue slider. So the hue slider comes into its own. I don't like any of those tones because they're all too bright. So I'm going to pull the saturation down even further so that we just get a hint. Use the preview button just to get an idea of what it used to look like and what it's going to look like now. So that's colorize. It's really quite a nice little feature. How are we going so far? This is a pretty good tool, yeah? All right. I'm having a conversation with myself here. So another thing is this. I can choose, for example, to change the green in this picture only because as we've seen up till now, everything is a global change. Everything gets brighter, everything gets darker, and so on and so forth. But if we click on the master drop-down menu, you can see here we've got reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magentas. So we have to kind of decide, I guess that's green, isn't it? So I'm going to click on green. When I click on green, just see what happens along this bottom of the screen here, the little rainbow pattern. As soon as I do that, a little parameter appears. I call this a parameter. It's not really a parameter. But what it says is, look, you've chosen what Adobe is reckoning to be green. And so it's put the green here, the little slider. So the green it's going to react to or change is the stuff or the hue or the range of green between there and there. So it kind of moves slightly towards the yellow, but it actually moves a little bit closer to the sort of turquoisey blue end of the spectrum. The reason we've got these little four posts means the actual colour we're dealing with is in between the two centre posts, and then it bleeds out or becomes fuzzy towards the end. So if we want to be absolutely precise and only use those colours, I would click on these two little arrows and pull them in like that and say, well, now only that bit of green is ever going to be changed. So I can be very, very specific. Another way to be even more specific is just to move the mouse. Look what happens here. It changes from a mouse shape, the regular cursor, into an eyedropper. And that means that if I now click on this green, it says, look, forget about Adobe green. I'm going to use North Moroccan watered down paint, house paint green tint. OK, and when I click it, you'll notice that these sliders will shift again. There we go. So it's become a little bit more specific. I can test the veracity of that specificity, if I can say it correctly, um, which I obviously didn't. Um, I can be very accurate by making a desaturation. So I can just desaturate and you think, oh wow, okay, that's amazing. So nothing else in the picture other than the green paint is going to be changed. So I can make the I can bake the paint a brighter than the salesman would actually have you believe and darker. You can see there's a little bit of green paint in the upper right section there, just outside of the bag, that also begins to glow a little bit. So clearly I don't want to go crazy like this because this is just not going to print, but I can brighten it or darken it accordingly. Interestingly, if I want to be a little bit more generous about the type of green that I'm using rather than just green and nothing else, I can then pull these little fellas to the left and to the right. And what that means is, OK, we're going to accept slightly bluey green tints and slightly yellowy green and make it, I suppose, widen the search or widen the effect. Now you'll see that it affects the green inside the little scoop on the right hand side. So I suppose there's never an example where we can just change one colour entirely because, of course, our lives are made up of multiple colours. You know, grass looks green, but it's actually got an awful lot of yellow in it. So if we change the yellow, it's going to make a radical effect on somebody's yellow scarf plus the green grass in the background. So, you know, life is never quite as simple as just black and white, as we know. Let me show you a tip, though. If I cancel out of this and say, somebody says, look, Robin, I really want you to fix up that green and just change it a little bit. And I've tried it and I found the shovel over to the right starts changing and then the stuff outside on the ground in the background also starts changing. What I can do is a bit, bit sneaky. I can make a selection. Oh my God, a selection. Okay, selection sounds a little bit scary, doesn't it? So I can choose Mr. Lasso tool. The lasso tool is a dead easy one. So what I do is this. I just draw around the outside of the bag. And the really cool thing about this, especially in this example, because of course I chose this example very carefully, is you don't have to be really accurate. Okay, so now when I apply that control or command U to it, only the stuff inside that selection works. So for example, I can increase the, or decrease the saturation, yeah? Very, very easy. So if I be a little bit more specific, choose greens, click in the greens, and then, for example, desaturate, only the stuff inside that selection line is going to be changed. All right, I can just hide my selection line a little bit more just so you can see what I'm doing here. So let's increase the brightness, pump it up. So nothing's changing in the shovel, nothing is changing in the background. So this is a good example to show you because it's easy for me just to draw around that selection line. However, a better way to do it is, again, using that brush here. And I might actually use, I don't know, maybe, let's try the selection brush tool. The selection brush tool 
kind of works like this. Oh, I think it does anyway. Let's have a look. I just need to have a look. There's my background. Um, I need to do this. And this is kind of like a really big fat brush. And look how easy that is to select. And I just need to get the inside bit. There we go. Whenever we use any kind of selection, this is a general tip for all you selectors out there. What we have to do is this. I'm going to just select this at the same time. Wow, Robin, this is so cool. So I'm going to select that greeny yellow as well. We need to soften that section. So you understand I've made a selection, but that selection line is like a line that's drawn with a scalpel. So if I say to my selection under the selection menu, look, I want you to soften it. It's a tool called feathering. And it's going to say, well, how much do you want to soften it? Soften it. This is a big file. It's 51 megabytes. It's an 18 megapixel camera. So I'm going to say, let's make it soften it by 22 pixels. You know, it's just a random number, but nothing changes in the picture you see here. But when I use my hue saturation tool, it's actually going to bleed the changes into softness around the edges of the selection. So basically, we're camouflaging the changes a little bit more. And you can see now I'm making the shovel on the right hand side absolutely glow. If I hide the selection line, you won't be able to see where the selection starts or finishes. It just gets a little bit hotter inside the uh, bag there on the green pigments. So it's a very nice tool, combining a little bit of a uh, selection, a little bit of feathering, and then a little bit of hue and saturation work in order to create a completely different picture.